Well, hey, YouTube. Welcome back, my friends, once again to Whiskey 3 Charlie Tango, W3CT, your good old friend, Jack. And this is my ham radio journey. So the thumbnail always gives it away, but we're going to talk about this a little bit here. I've been making low-cost, budget-friendly antennas now since pretty much since I started these uh, YouTube videos. And I realized in the last video, we talked about using a 9 to 1 unun. And in looking at that 9 to 1 unun, I told you that could raise the cost by $30 if you buy a commercial one. They work really well. There's nothing wrong with them. If you want to add that extra $30, that's fine. But I think I came up with the lowest cost 9 to 1 unun that I've ever seen. I don't... I don't think anybody else has ever built anything like this. Uh, you know, there's always some added costs, such as cases, 3D print jobs, or something of that nature. This is going to be a very low cost, nine to one on none. So let's talk about that right after this. All right, so why? Why would I even take this task on of thinking of a way to build a 9 to 1 unun as cheap as I can build it? You know, obviously I have a couple. Uh, I built a really nice one. You know, you've seen me build it. The 9 to 1 with the built-in choke, it works extremely well. And I carry it in the car so I can take it to the park when I go out there. Uh, and I also use it here at the house. So I know it works. I know I run my radio at 80 watts on CW so I know it works up to 80 watts just fine it covers that power this one I believe is going to be very low power so this is probably going to work and I'm going to I'm going to try it with the G90 so I'll run it at 20 watts but I'm sure it'll work for all of your QRP rigs out there and a lot of you have been commenting and I appreciate it on the videos say Jack you know I, I use 9 to 1 on I build random wire antennas uh, a random wire to me is really nice you guys know over the winter, I bought the Wolf River Coil Vertical. What I don't like about those kind of antennas is every time you're going to change frequencies or change bands, you have to go out and retune the thing. I don't like that. To me, it's a, and, and I know it's a necessity and it's, it's not that big of a deal. But on the other hand, it is time consuming because if you go from 20 to 30 to 40 to 40 to 20, you're retuning that antenna, which, you know, it's a nice antenna. I would say if you can go out and do a single band activation, it works well. If you're going to change bands one time, it works well for that too. But the random wire antennas, all I got to do is change bands, hit the tune button on the radio, retune the radio, or use your external tuner, and you're good to go. So to me, it's a lot more versatile antennas to use a random wire. Or, and I know a lot of you guys are building linked dipoles. I think that's a pretty good solution because you have the different bands. You just got to plug the different connectors in. But then again, you're even taking it out, putting it down, taking it out, putting it down. This way, all you got to do again is hit the tuner and you're good to go. Okay, random wire antenna. So let's go ahead. We're going to have a look here now. I don't like to talk too much in these videos because I always tell my wife, I said, look, I watch YouTube videos. They talk about what they're going to do for 20 minutes before they show you. So let's get into it right now. Okay, guys, yeah, it looks like the light is kind of washing this out up here, maybe a little bit. So we have our wire, okay? This is our standard wire we used before. It's, let me make sure I can tell you this again because I don't want to get it wrong. There it says, Jack, you got it wrong again. It is an 18-gauge wire, okay? That's what this wire is here, okay? Multi-colors, it's easier to wrap a 9-to-1 unknown if you have different colors. We're going to be using the... Green, yellow, and blue again. You see those ones are still wrapped. I haven't opened those. All right. The next thing we're going to use here is a BNC connector. Okay. That's going to be for our antenna. Now, you can use this. If you need to, you can step it up to your coax cable. You guys know there's all kinds of adapters. But we're going to use a BNC connector. It's what I have available. We're going to use power poles. Now these power poles are going to be used for my wire to go for the antenna as well as to go for the counterpoise. Okay, if I wish to use a counterpoise, I can put these on there and use it as a counterpoise. Or also, there's not a built-in choke to this one. So also your coax will become your counterpoise. Just go ahead and put a choke, 
you know, right before the transmitter is where I put my choke at. So that way I can use the coax as a counterpoise. So we're going to use those. We're going to use a core here. Okay, now you're going to say, Jack, you didn't write it down, but i tell you where it's going to be right here on the video. I'm going to tell you what this core is. The links to all this stuff, and all this stuff came from Amazon, will be in the description below. You can just simply click the link and purchase all this, all this gear. Okay, that's what we're going to use for the core. Okay, then what I want to do is, hopefully, I'm just going to wrap it in tape. So, there you have it. I mean, we're going to try to do it this way just to make it as inexpensive as we can. I don't have a case for it, so we're not going to put it in a case. Uh, it's also going to make it very small and very lightweight. So, I think it's going to work out really well for us, I think. Again, this is all experimentation. It's all theory. I don't know. Let me give you the total breakdown of the cost here if you can't see this. $1.14 for the BNC connector. Okay, you buy them in packages of eight, but for each of them it's $1.14. $1.69 for the power pole, and that's for two pairs. So I need two pairs because I need, uh, you know, obviously a pair. We're going to put the red wires for the, uh, the driven element, and I'll use the black uh, power poles for my counterpoise. The core was $4. That's so what the core was, $4. And about a dollar fifty cents in total wire. We're going to cut, um, you know what? I'm only going to cut twenty four inches of wire. I cut thirty before and ended up with too much, and that was a bigger core. So we'll cut twenty four inches of wire, and we'll go with that. So you can see the total for this nine to one onion is roughly eight dollars, and we'll round it up, eight dollars and fifty cents. You can't buy one on Etsy for that. So there you have it. That's pretty inexpensive to build this thing. It's not going to take long. So what I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to go ahead and cut my wires, and I'm going to wrap this. I'm not going to show you wrapping this thing, because I think that's a very boring part of the video, and I don't think you want to see it anyway. But we are going to wrap it to the specifications I used before from this. I'm going to hold this up for a second so you can get a screenshot of this. And then you'll have it. And you can see there why I am using the green, yellow, and blue. It's because that's what the, this gentleman used. And uh, it works. It's very easy to wrap it that way. The total wraps is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Total wraps. And hopefully I can get it on this little core. So that's going to be my... Uh, task here so all right let me get started i'm going to go ahead and start rolling this thing up so my idea is once i'm done what's going to happen is this will be the feed line it'll be on the one side this will be the counterpoise coming off of this ground connector here and that'll be for the antenna and then we'll just simply roll tape around everything to, to put it together and we should be good to go. See, I always say should. I hate that word because it actually gives you some doubt. But I have doubt that it will work. But you know what? I can't wait to put it together, take it out in the field, and, and see how it works. So, all right. Let me go ahead and we're going to get started by rolling this up. And I'll come back to you and show you some of the uh, progress as we go along, getting this stuff together and uh, getting my power pole in the wire. And hey, we'll see what happens. Okay, guys, so I got the core wrapped. I can tell you, your fingers are going to be a little, it's a little tough getting it through here because it's a little smaller, but you can see where they stayed in perfect order. You got, uh, let's see how this is going to actually go. Actually, like this way here. So we have our yellow our green and our blue. Okay, the blue is the ground. Okay. The yellow is going to get tied to the green wire over here on the back side. All right. So we'll put those together and put some solder on there. Probably a little piece of shrink wrap, I think, just to keep it nice. The blue on this side is going to go to your inside piece of your BNC connector. 
Okay, into there. That's the blue wire. Let's see here, what else we have? The yellow wire on this side is going to go to one of the power pole connectors over here. Okay, and as you can see, very transparent. I cut it too long. I cut this at 28, and now I got all this extra wire here, but that's okay. Gives me some room to play to figure out where I want to put my connectors anyway. But there's a total of nine turns here, counting the first wrap. First wrap going through. Remember, every time you pass through the center, it's supposed to be a wrap. Okay. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine coming back through here. Okay. So it actually wrapped pretty well on there. Uh, like I said a little tight. I'm going to space these out a little bit to try to make sure that nothing's overlapping and touching here. I think that could be a very much downside to the antenna. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to straighten them out here. I'll put another zip tie. I got one zip tie here. I'm going to put another zip tie over here to hold it all together. And then I'll start trying to figure out how to piece these wires together. And again, I don't really show the soldering and everything. I think that's kind of... I don't want to bore you with the soldering part of it. But yeah, I just want to show you it's wrapped and ready to go. Okay, guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like I said, this is going to be the... We're going to call it the $9. 9 to 1 on none. So, very inexpensive, easy to build. Uh, just take your time with it. Again, don't cut your wires to 30 inches. Cut your wires to, I would say probably 20 inches would be plenty. Uh, cut it at 24. That'd probably be fine. So two feet of wire. You'll have a little bit left over to work with, but that should be okay. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time. This is Whiskey 3 Charlie Tango, W3CT, your good old friend Jack. Up here once again in the Jack Shack. And this is my ham radio journey. I'll talk to you on the next video. Till then, if you enjoyed this one, give it a big thumbs up. Smash that subscribe button. We'd love to have you stick around here for some more upcoming videos. I'll talk to you next time. Again, 73s. Take care.